Welcome back to ArgoJS. Today's question is leak code 1091, shortest path in binary matrix. So given an M by M binary matrix grid, return the length of the shortest clear path in the matrix. If there is no clear path, return minus one. So a clear path in a binary matrix is a path from top left cell to bottom right cell, such that all the visited cells of the path are zero, all the adjacent cells of path are eight directionally connected. The length of a clear path is the number of visited cells of this path. So in example one, we have this grid of this matrix and we want to get from top left to bottom right and we have eight possible directions to go from with this initial point so we can go up down left and right and all the diagonals so we first visit this cell which will equal one and then we move diagonally to visit the bottom right cell which will equal one as well so adding those together will give us the output of two so this question is asking for the shortest path so we're going to be using breathless search for the solution now we know the starting point is always going to be at index zero zero and we know the end point is always going to be the bottom right so we know the starting point and we know the ending point now with breathless search we're going to be using a queue and this queue is going to restrict the process in order to first in first out so we'll always have to shift off of the queue so within the queue what we're going to add is we're going to add this starting point so we're going to add the starting indices as well as the count right so we can initialize this with a count of one to say that we've visited this value right here okay so this has been visited within each loop of the BFS. We're going to have to make a check to see whether these indices are equal to these indices. As you can see, zero, zero is not equal to the bottom right. So next thing to do is to check in each direction. So we're going to go up, down, left and right, as well as all diagonals. Now, as you can see, all of these are out of bound. This one, we can't go here. And we also can't go here because they're pointing to ones. So we'll make that check. If the next value is equal to a one, don't go there. If it's equal to a zero, we'll go there. So this is the only arrow we care about, the only direction we care about. So we'll add this into our queue. So zero, one, we're gonna add the indices and we're also gonna update the count. So one goes to two, yeah. So we've seen this, we make the check, we check to see whether this is at the end. It's not, so we check the eight directions. The issue we have here is that one of the directions goes back to the previous zero. So before we even start making checks in here, we need to go back a step and we need to update this at the end to one. That way, when we make the eight direction check, we're gonna go back here, we're gonna see that this is a one and we're gonna back out of it because we're only looking for zeros within this breathless search. So we're at this point, the only directions we really care about are this one and this one. So we can add the indices of this plus its count to the queue. So one, two, we'll update the count to three. This one, zero, two, update the count to three. And before we move on to checking this one, we're going to remove this and add one. So now we're here, we check if this is at the end point, it's not. So we check the directions. So the only two that we really care about is down here and up here. So again, we can add these into our queue. And we've seen this one. We're currently looking at this one. So we can add two, two, four in here and also zero, two and four in here. Now we update this to one. We can remove that. The next in the queue is zero, two, three. So we shift off of queue to look at these zero, two, three. So this one is going to check all of its directions, right? And as you can see, none of the directions are valid, right? Because we've updated this to one because there's a shorter path down here. That means that we cannot go anywhere from this point. So we can back out of this, go back to here. We've seen this now and we can shift off of Q and go to 224. So when we reach 224, we check to see whether the indices is equal to the end and it is. So we can just return this count. Time complexity of this one is going to be O of N because it's a bog standard breathless search and space complexity is also going to be O of N. So let's write this out. So the first we need to make a check. So if grid at zero, zero is equal to one, then we just return minus one because there is no path going from top left to bottom right where the only values we visit are zeros. Then we need to make our directions array. So I'm going to speed this up. So these are all the eight directions that we're going to be going in. And we're going to be using these to make the BFS a lot easier to implement. With the queue, we're going to initialize it and pass in the initial starting point and also a count of one. Then it's a case of carrying out BFS. So while q.length, we can extract the current x, current y, and count from here. So that current x, current y, and count equal q.shift. Now within JavaScript, there isn't a fancy way of shifting off of Q, but we can consider this as like a linked list DQ, which is 
a one time complexity. If current x is equal to grid dot length minus one and current y is equal to grid zero dot length minus one, we can return count, right? So if we're at the bottom right position, we can just return the count. Then we need to loop through the directions. And the way we do this is extract X and Y from the directions array. And then we create the new X and new Y. So the next positions. And we do this by adding current X and X together and current Y and Y together. So this is just shorthand for writing that next to X equal current X plus X and let next Y equal current Y plus Y. Just cleans up the code and makes it more concise. Now we need to make a check to see whether the next position is inbound and if it's equal to zero. So if next X is less than zero or next X is greater than grid dot length minus one. So too far up or too far down or next y is less than zero, so too far left, or next y is greater than grid zero dot length minus one, so too far to the right. We also need to make a check if the next value we go to is equal to one. If it is, then we don't wanna go there, so we just continue from this. Otherwise, the position we're gonna be on at this point is going to be a zero, so we need to push into Q that position so next x next y and also we need to update the count here so count plus one and to stop us from carrying out repeated calculations we need to update next x next y to equal one otherwise we just return minus one let's run that and submit it and there you go 